Praise God. <laughs> All right, you may be seated. Amen. Are you happy this morning? Praise God. I want to do something special with you today. I want to take you into my private Bible studies. <laughs> this year we are doing our first Israel study tour. This is different than the other tours where you go visit things, go to the gift shop. <laughs> we just take a team of pastors and we study the Bible in the land of the Bible. Come on, that's powerful. Come on, amen. <laughs> and as we're doing this, I begin to study it. I begin to see something very powerful. It's that the Bible, we have to remember this now. Come on. That the Bible was not written to us. It was written to Middle Eastern people. Come on, amen. And so many things when we read it, we don't understand. Because it's the culture. It's the people he's speaking to. And so many things went without being said. He could say things that he never had to explain because he's speaking to Jews. And we have to read the Bible with the right eyes. We read the Bible with Mongolian eyes. <laughs> and we must read the Bible with Jewish eyes. Come on, amen. amen. If we want to really understand what Jesus is speaking. Now, I don't know about you. But I want to get everything I can from the word of God. I want to dig deep into the word of God. Because it's the only book that has the power to change my life. But only if we understand it. Now, listen. The Bible was written in a certain language. The, the culture of the Middle East is about two things. Honor and shame. Everything is about these two things. Maintaining honor and removing shame. And so when Jesus came, what he was doing was trying to remove the shame of the people he encountered. Come on, amen. But the Pharisees, they were only concerned about one thing. The religious leaders were only concerned about maintaining their honor. So here's what Jesus does. He comes to an area. And the Pharisees 
They want to shame him. So they ask him questions. Is it lawful to heal people on the Sabbath? This woman was caught in adultery. What will you do? Who is greatest in the kingdom? Can you see this? Every question was challenging Jesus and trying to bring shame. You have to understand there was only a little bit of honor to go around. They were under the rule of Rome. Their country was not their own. They were being occupied. They were conquered. And these religious leaders, they had the honor. And Jesus came. And people started to follow him. People started to listen to him. And they said, this is horrible. He is taking away our honor. And so we must stop him. Oh, come on, amen. Amen. You see, the cross was not so much about forgiveness as it was about shame. Come on, amen. Man. The cross was an honor killing. They needed to stop him. They needed to take away his honor. So, what is more shameful than being nailed to a cross during the Passover? Everybody was there. Everybody saw him. No clothes. Beaten. Punished. Hung on a cross. And put to shame. They tried to take his honor. Honor is everything. When you lose it, it is almost impossible to regain it. And I know every one of us in this room, we have had shame in our life. And we have brought shame to ourselves, our families, and we have brought shame to God. Our sin is shameful. Amen. And we must have our shame removed. Amen. The Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus. You see, they, they were confronting him in the marketplace. They were arguing with him. And Jesus was winning every, every argument, every time. And it got so bad that they said, we will not confront him anymore. Every time we do, he is winning. And he is causing us to lose more honor. 
улмал бид нарийн одоо нэр хүндэд халтаад байна. So they try something. Тэгээ тэд нэг зүйл хийх гэж оролдож байгаа. To embarrass him. Одоо Есүс ичээх нэг зүйл хийх. And we see this in John or Luke chapter 7. За Лукийн 7 дугаар бүлгээс бид үүнийг хардаг. The Bible says in verse 36. За 34 дугаар ишлэл дээр нь Библи ингэж хэлж байгаа. That one Pharisee invited Jesus to his home to eat. Pharisee-чуудын нэг нь хамт зоог барихыг түүнээс хүсжээ. And he went into the Pharisee's house and he sat down to eat, to meet. Иисус тэр Pharisee-н гэрд орж тухлан суува. On the surface. Аха, одоо ингээд гадна талаас нь харах юм бол This looks very honoring. Чухам Иисусыг хүндлээд байгаа юм шиг. Come on, amen. Тийм багаас дээ тий, бүр өөрөө залаад авчирж ийш тий. Jesus, will you come to my home? Jesus, I would like to give you a meal. And Jesus comes. Because Jesus, Jesus wanted to honor them. So he comes. He sits down at a table. Now, these meals weren't so much about the food. This is what was called a, a kavorum. Where all the religious leaders would get together and they would talk about the Bible. And they very popular. And they would open up their home. And the everyday people, the regular people, could stand outside on the porch. And they could listen. They could learn. And at the, at the end of the meal, the Pharisees would give them the leftover food. This is disrespectful. So Jesus comes. And he says, come, come. Sit down. And something amazing happens. A woman sees Jesus sitting down. And she runs and gets an alabaster box full of oil and breaks it. Jumps over the fence into, into this rabbi's house. Breaks the box and washes Jesus' feet. Takes her hair down. This is a big deal. Only her husband was supposed to see her hair. Only a, she took it down and began to cry and dry the feet. Why? Would she do this? You see, you have to understand what was going on. Jesus doesn't respond. Jesus, uh -huh. He doesn't respond. But the Pharisees, they get upset. Do you know who this woman is? This is inappropriate. This is not right. Come on, amen. amen. She jumped into my home. And do you know who this woman is? You see, the Bible calls her a sinner. But she wasn't a prostitute. We know that there's a different word for that. 
What she was was a, a Roman sympathizer. She uh, helped the Romans. She was rich. Because she was helping them. Selling them things. But she betrayed her country. And her Jewish family. But she could afford an alabaster box. Come on, amen. She was shamed. And the man said, do you know who this woman is? How can you let her wash your feet? How can you let her touch you? And Jesus doesn't rebuke them. He tells a story. Come on, amen. amen. He says, there were two debtors. One owed one day's wages. One owed 500 days wages. The owner, the master, forgave both. Which one do you think is more grateful? Come on, amen. Five hundred days. You know the oil. It was a myrrh. It was called a myrrh. It's very expensive. Very hard to get this particular oil from a tree. It was very hard to get to. Many biblical scholars believe. It would have been worth about 500 days' wages. Amen. And Jesus said, You see, this is the custom. Come on. Do you know the Middle Eastern, the Jewish custom? When a rabbi comes to your home, Every man in the house. They must come. Give him a kiss. Wash his hands. Wash his feet. This is a big deal. Because it's a sign of honor. This is why the word of God says. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring the good news, the gospel. Because a man of God is supposed to have clean feet because they're honored for what they bring to people. But Jesus said, I came into your home, he says in verse 47. I came into your home. No kiss. I came into your house. You gave me no water. You did not wash my feet. You see, you see what they were doing? They were trying to shame Jesus. As soon as he sat down at the table, dirty hands, dirty feet, everyone was watching. They gave him no kiss. They did not wash his hands or his feet. As soon as he sat down, 
the whole table would have been unclean. The Pharisees were like, see, he is not so honorable. We do not respect him. We do not honor him. Look, we sit down. No, no water, no for your feet, no kiss. Just sit down. Uh-huh. But this lady, this sinner, who Jesus had met before, and had already forgiven her. Come on. Amen. She sees it. They are trying to shame him. She runs. Gets the alabaster box. Jumps over the fence. She says, You will not shame my Lord and Master. He has done too much for me. I will bring honor to his name. She breaks the box. Washes his feet. You see, the Bible says that we, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, let your light shine before men. That they will see, they will see your good works. And give honor to your Father in heaven. What we do as believers either brings honor to God or bring shame to him. Amen. She knew everything that God has done for me. Everything that he has forgiven me of. He has forgiven me. He has restored my honor. I will not bring, let people bring shame. I will bring honor to you. Come on, can you see this? I will bring my money. I will bring my wealth. I will bring my own honor. This was very shameful what she did. Jumping into someone's home. Come on, taking her hair down. I don't care what you do to me. As long as my life brings honor to God. Come on, amen. Amen. I was in the airport in China. Many years ago, back in 1992. I was a young preacher. And I was in Hong Kong. And one pastor friend of mine. He says, you want to have some fun? I said, yeah, yeah. Let's smuggle some Bibles into China. I said, what? Smuggle Bibles? You see, he was Chinese. But I am black. Which one will get caught first? Which one will get caught first? Come on, amen. And my friends were all white. But we love the 
we love the Lord. <laughs> and we lay our life down for him. Come on, amen. So they take the Bibles. They, they, they take them to my stomach. Give me big shirt. I have a bag has Bibles in it. And I look like American tourist. American Oh, just coming to see China. We get to the border. And my friend. He puts down the bag. On the scanner. And I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. The man was going to see. There's a Bible in there. And when you put your bag down, you have to go through the gate, this little gate. Uh-huh. Like swings open. But it has to be like unlatched. Opened, you know? Unlatched. Right there. I see it. Going to catch us. What can I do? Everyone's looking at me. Because they had never seen black man before. So all the Chinese. Oh, black man. Look at his hands. One side white, one side black. And everyone's like, <laughs> So I, here's my chance. I tried to get to the gate. But it's not opening. So I get down. And I try to get underneath it. I'm on my knees. Everybody. Oh, look at you, black man. Trying to get under the gate. It latches, it latches. Open it up. Everybody, oh, look at him. I'm trying to get down. Bible's on. All over my waist. And, uh, and all the Chinese people running. <laughs> it was very shameful. But as they were looking at me, they could not look at the scanner. And all the Bibles are going through. Why are they looking at the black man? Now let me ask you. I brought no glory to myself. But I brought glory to God. Because of what he has done for me. Come on, amen. I want to bring glory to him. I want people to see my good works. Glorify my Father in heaven. You know, about nine years later, I was in Singapore. Pastors conference. So many Chinese pastors come. One man stands up. Tells a testimony. He says, I am Chinese pastor. He said that I was not a believer. 1992. He said, but someone gave me a Bible that was smuggled in by Americans. He said that. I said, what? I'm so grateful. He says, I read the book of John. 
I saw what Jesus did for me. And I became Christian. And I sat there. And I thought, maybe, maybe it was my Bibles. I don't know. But I know this. God was glorified. God received honor. Because of what I did. Because of my act. Come on, amen. amen. We see the story of David and Goliath. And because we don't read it with the right eyes, we forget the reason why David fought Goliath. David It's a nice children's story. About bravery. Courage. About God being a God of miracles. But this is a story about honor. And shame. You see, Goliath and the Philistines. They were mocking God. Your God is so great. Send someone down to fight us. And if they can defeat Goliath, then our God will bow down to your God and we will serve you. Everyone in Israel was scared. Shame was coming. And his name. And his people sat back and did nothing. Until David came. And he heard the words. Maybe your God is in the bathroom. They said. Maybe the God of Israel is asleep. And David said, no one will talk about my God like this. He was 13 years old. Just a boy. But he understood. Honor. He understood. That I must take away the shame on all of Israel and restore honor back to God. You know the story. Come on, amen. One rock, one throw, one dead giant. And what did Saul and Jonathan say? Did Jonathan in this you got You have restored the honor of Israel. Come on, amen. Jesus was sitting at a dinner. Jesus in with the fair with. Sinners. This is bad. Because he was a rabbi. He was a rabbi and rabbis could be made unclean by sitting with sinners. Now, this was a particularly bad group of people. Everybody knew them. This was a politician. Which means he was working with the Romans to oppress 
his own people. This was a tax collector. So he was working with the Romans to steal money from the Jews. They were all rich because of their corruption. Come on, amen. Amen. What do you feel? When you see people that are corrupt. Taking money from poor people. Come on, amen. Knowing that they're rich because they have stolen from good people like yourselves. Does it make you angry? Come on, amen. Makes me angry. But here's Jesus. Sitting with this people. In front of everybody. And the Pharisee walks up. The Pharisee Luke 15. Says, hey, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Don't you know who you're eating with? Politician, tax collector. Prostitutes. These are the worst people in our community. Now, I want you to understand. They are angry. And so this is a confrontation. A fight. You cannot eat with them. You cannot eat with these people. Can you see how angry the Pharisees must have been? Shouting. Making Shouting. a commotion. Shouting. 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 He tells three stories. <laughs> the story of the lost coin. Lost sheep. Lost sons. He never even looks up. They're standing there. You cannot eat with him. And Jesus just sits. Tells the story of the lost coin. You lost a great coin of value. Would you not turn over the whole house to find it? Come on, amen. Tells the story of the lost sheep. If you lost one sheep, would you not leave the 99? And go after the one. Why would you, how can you leave 99 sheep? You can leave them. Because there is good water. Green grass. There's plenty of food to eat. They, they are taken care of. But the one sheep is lost. Hungry. They could die. Come on, amen. And then he tells the story of the lost sons. I want you to see this because it's very powerful. This is, this is what the Bible says in Luke chapter 15, verse 11. He says, a certain man had two sons. Oh, amen. Not one son. Two sons. Two sons. 
The one son comes and says, I want my inheritance early. This is bad. This is against the law. Because what he is saying is, I wish my father was dead. This is dishonoring. This is shameful. Then he's in a village. And he tries to sell the land. No one will buy it. Because it's ancestral land. It is shameful for us to own that land. It belongs to that family. So he had to sell it to a Gentile. And now in this Beautiful Jewish village. There is a Gentile Roman living in the middle of the holy juice. This is shameful. Everybody sees it. Everybody knows what this son has done to his father. And then he takes off. Goes to another land. Wastes all of his money. He is so poor that he goes to feed pigs. This is bad because he's a Jew. Jews cannot touch pigs. It's going to be around pigs. They cannot eat pigs. This is unclean animal. But he was so bad. So poor. That he even began to eat the pig's food. This is horrible. So much shame. Come on, amen. So what does he say? He says, I will go back to my father's house. And I can no longer be a son. I know this, I know this. But I will ask to be a servant. Because anything is better than this. Watch, watch, watch. The sun is coming. Dirty clothes. Dirty face, dirty hair. Head bowed. Full of shame. Because of what he has done. He's coming. The father, he is old man. He sees him. He lifts up his skirt. Everybody can see his legs. This is shameful. And he runs. Old people don't run. Not for young people. This is shameful. Come on, amen. But why did he run? Why did he run? Before the boy could get into the village. He ran and he met him. He put a coat, beautiful robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. Everybody in the village knew what was going to happen. Because this son did not just shame his father. He shamed the village. 
shamed our country. Broke our laws. Shamed our God. So what they were going to do, the villagers, they were going to do what's called a sizak. It's a shaming ceremony. They would grab the boy, take him to the center of their village, the father would not come. The mother could come. She could beg, please, please don't do this to my boy. But the village elders, they would take a pot, a clay pot, fill it with nuts. Very expensive. Nuts are very expensive in the Middle East. And they would take the pot in front of the whole village. Smash it. All the nuts would go everywhere. They would say, you are cut off. Sizak means to cut off like a branch from a tree. You are no longer a part of us. You see, you see all these nuts rolling around? That is all your blessings. They are scattered. There is nothing left to you. Everything is broken. Never show your face here again. But the father picks up his skirt. Runs before they could get to him. Before they could break. Everybody saw in the village. The father run and restore the honor. Put the ring on the finger. Throws a party. And this is what's powerful. He doesn't serve a goat. They eat goat every day. Oh, for a special occasion, they will kill a lamb. For a wedding, maybe. But this father, he killed a fatted calf. You never kill a cow. You get the milk. Come on, this, is, this is a sign of great honor. The son, the brother comes. He sees this. He gets angry. And he shouts at his father. You did this for him? After all I have done, I'm working for you. I am helping you. He took all of our land, sold it, and ran away. This is very shameful. Don't talk to your father this way. And the father says, Everything is already yours. You're blessed. But your brother was lost. And now he's found. Will you come inside? He's sitting outside. 
тэгэхээр одоо аав гадаа сууж исэн байх нь штэ at the party everyone is there тэр хүн болгон баярлж байгаа тэр одоо цингэн юу яр angry одоо нөгөө тэх нь өөртөө байна as the eldest son he was supposed to greet everyone уул нь айлын өөгөн хүүгийн хувьд бүх хүнтэй минд мэдээд явж явах хэрэгтэй юм байхгүй юу he's sitting there angry гэсэн чинь тэнд төнтий тлаа уурлаа сууч dishonoring his family тэгэл аавыгаа гэр бүлээ үлдэсэн аавыгаа хүндлэх everyone is seeing him outside тэгэд хүн болгон харж байгаа he is saying i will not honor my father тэр эсвэл би энэ аавыг хүндлэхгүй гэж байгаа i will not come би орохгүй the father says please сэн за аав нь гоож штэ come in please энийг ороо тэрэ your brother he's back with us дүүн буцаад ирчэ he was lost we thought he was dead өгсөн байсан гэж бодсон тэр маань ирчэ одоо мөнхөд биднээс алах болсон гэж бодсон now he's back одоо тэр маань ирчэ listen jesus doesn't end the story тэгэхээр есүс түүхээ яг түүхийн төгсгэлийг бид нар дүүлээгүй штэ we don't know what happened Тэгээ цааш юу болсныг бид нар мэдэхгүй. Does the brother come in? Тэгэл нөгөө нэг ах нь гэрлүүгөө орсон. Does he stay outside? Эсвэл гадаана үлдсэн ч юм уу? Is the family brought together again? Тэр гэр бүл дахиж нэгдсэн ч юм уу, үгүй ч юм уу? We don't know. Бид мэдэхгүй байгаа. We don't know. Тэ? Мэдэхгүй. Because Jesus was using this story. Яа тэгэхээр Есүс энэ бүх түүхийг ашиглаад to correct the Pharisees. Фарисейчүүдийг зэмлсэн байхгүй. You see, they were the older brother. Яа тэгэхээр фарисейчууд ч нөгөө нэг энэ уугун хүн ахгүй. How dare you? Та нар маань ямар хайр хүнд тэлийм хүлээс нэгнүүд билээ гэж хэлчихэ. Eat with them. Тэгэхээр эднэртэйгээ ороод тоолоо. How dare you? Give him honor. Үнэхээр алдар хүнд тэлийг ах хэвчтэй нэгнүүд. As soon as Jesus sat down with these people. Тэгэхээр Есүс яг энэ гимтнүүдтэй ингээ энэ ширэнд суус суумагц. He removed their shame. Одоо тэр хүмүүс ич хүрийг Есүс ахгүй болгоч байхгүй. Come on, amen. Amen. Ичүүрийг нь авч хайсан гэсэн. Like the father. Яг тэр аав шиг. They didn't deserve it. Уул нь хүртэх эрэхгүй л дээ. They did not earn it. Одоо үүний төлөө тэд төч. They did not work for it. Үүний төлөө нэг ч юм хөдөлмөрлөв. They did nothing. Үндэ хийсэн зүйл баг. He did everything. Харин аав нь бүгдийг хийж байгаа. And he removed their shame because he is greater than them. Тэр тиднээс дэд үлэмж дээр байр суурьтай учраас үүнийг хийх эрх мэдэлтэй болох. Only one greater than you can remove your shame. Тэгэхээр таны дээр байгаа танаас илүү агуу ахмад нэгэн таны ичгүүрийг танаас авч хайх эрхтэй байдаг. They didn't see. Тэгэд тэд үнийг харахгүй с. They were standing outside. Тэ одоо фарисейчүүд ч нөгөө уурлаад гадаа байгаа штэ. Angry орта shouting тэгэл ашигчаал because they didn't understand the love of god тэд бурхны хайрыг ойлгохгүй с he wants to remove shame тэгэд яг тэднээс энэ ичгүүрийг нь авч хайж байгаа тэр нэр хүндийг нь сэргээж өгч байгаа maybe you're in the room today магадгүй энэ өрөөнд байгаа та and you feel because of what you've done та өөрийнхөө хийсэн зүйл юм улмаас maybe you're here And you're saying, Pastor Troy? Тамагдгүй ингэж Troy pastor. Everybody knows me. Хүн болгоо нав мэддэг юм уу? I am good Christian. Би ч сайт гэж хөхгүй. I have a Bible, I go to church. Надад Библи маанч байдаг, би сүмдээж байдаг. On the outside. Одоо ингэ гаднаса. Everything looks very honorable. Бүх зүйл айгүй хүндэтгэл хүлээх хүсэл харагдаж байгаа хөхгүй. But in your heart and in your life. Гэхдээ яг таны амьдралд, яг таны дотоод зүрх сэтгэлд there is shame. Тэнд ч хүр байдаг. Nobody sees it. Үүний хүн болгон төдийлэн хараад байдаг. No one knows what you have done. Яг тэр таны төр хийсэн зүйлийг хүмүүс тэр болгон мэддэггүй. No one knows what has happened. Яг юу болсныг хүмүүс мэдэхгүй. But Jesus knows. Гэхдээ Есүс мэднэ. And we can act honorable. And we can receive the honor of men. Тэр бид нар хүмүүсийн хүнд сэтгэлийг хүлээж авч чадах юм аа. We must have the honor of God. Үүний тулд бид нар бурхнаасаа тэр нэр хүндийг эхлээд авах хэрэгтэй байдаг. Must have our shame removed. Танаас тэр ичгүүр бурхнаар зайлуулагдах хэрэгтэй байдаг. Come on, amen. Amen. The only way you can remove shame. 
showed them to you. <laughs> Number one. You can remove your shame by bringing honor to God. The woman broke the box. She was shameful. But by her honoring of God, shame was removed. You saw it with David. The only way we remove shame is through an heroic act. Jesus at the cross removed our shame with one heroic act. Being sacrificed for others for no reason. Gave himself for us. And the last thing is only someone greater than you can remove your shame. Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. There's none greater. There's none higher than him. He is the only one that can take away your shame. Take away the private inner shame that keeps us from truly being children of God. From being pure. And knowing, knowing everything is right in us. Everything is right with us. There is no shame in me. There is only honor. Because I've had my shame removed. Come on, stand up with me as we pray. I don't need to ask, I know, I know. Everybody here. In our life somewhere. There is some shame. Because of what we have done. Or what was done to us. It's shameful things. Because of that, sometimes it is very hard for us to come close to God. Sometimes we know we are saved, we are Christian. But we do not feel very good about ourselves. We are not confident in our salvation. Because we feel the shame. We know we are forgiven. We know that God loves us. But the shame is still there. From our past. From what was done to us. I want to tell you, God is a loving father. He did not break the pot. You are accepted by him. At the cross, there was a heroic act. At the cross, there was an act of sacrifice. Service. At the cross, someone greater than you sacrificed to remove your shame. And when every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me pray for you right now. I believe you can be set free from shame today. 
Every bit of it, every ounce of it can be removed. Jesus is here to remove shame. If you will release it to him, if you will let him, if you allow someone greater than you, someone that is an elder, someone that is a father, to restore your honor today. God will come. God is coming now. You touch your life. Take away every bit of shame. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your power to destroy shame. You pay the price. Take away our shame. You are greater than us, and only someone greater can remove it. Only a father can pronounce us clean. Only a father can remove our shame. No matter what it is, no matter what we have done, no matter what happens, you came as a loving father. You ran to us. You put a robe around us. Put a ring on our finger. Father, today, we receive what you've done for us. And I say in the name of Jesus, let every shame be broken off of your life. We command it to go in the name of Jesus. We release the blood of Jesus destroy every work of the enemy. And we say in Jesus' name, there is no more shame, only honor. Only honor. Lift your hands one more time. The presence of God sensing it's coming so strong. Come on, open your heart to Him right now. Every blockage is being removed. Every obstacle to you here feeling His touch and hearing His word is being removed right now. He cannot come close to the shameful, and you are no longer the shame. You are the honor of God. Jesus name. Father, thank you. Storing honor. Storing honor. Every heart, every family. Every person in this world. Honor is restored. Because of what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. You left the 99 to find me. You turned over the house because I am very precious to you. You fought to remove my shame. I am, I am no longer unclean. I am no longer guilty. I am no longer shame. I've been set free. I've been restored. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been cleansed. Washed in Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, it's very simple. Ask him, ask him now. 
Ask him now to be Lord of your life. Tell him you are a sinner. I've done so many things. I need my honor restored. Right now, he will come into your life. He will save you. He will Bless the people, bless the pastors in Mongolia. We're going to be giving out hundreds of coats to kids in the Gurk district. Some winter is so bad. <laughs> we want the kids to be safe. We want to honor them. Show them God has not forgotten them. He loves them. He's on their side. This is just one of the things we do. In about a month, I'm going to Honduras. We have a medical clinic. There are two medical clinics. We have a ministry there. Helping people with medicine. So many children that are sick. Need medicine. It's very difficult for us. But we know God loves them. God will not forget them. The water, the water is so dirty. Almost every child that comes to our clinic, they have some bug, some parasite. Some fever. Because of infections. And they call come. Because they need this one pill that will kill everything. Save their life. Save their life. Each pill costs us 25 US dollars. Sometimes in one month, we will give out 250 pills. So many kids need them. I'm going to ask you to help me. Bring honor to God. See, because it's not us doing it. We will not take the honor from God. It is God's honor. And we tell them, it is God who is helping you. God who sent us. God who loves you. And God get the honor. I ask you to give something today. So that we can help bring honor to God's name. Every child in Honduras will know. There is a God in heaven. And he has not forgotten it. He is still the God that answers my fire. He's alive. He cares. Come on, amen. Come on, put your arms around yourself like this. Come on, everybody, everybody. That's a hug from Pastor Troy. God bless you. Amen, amen.